DNA is a double-stranded molecule. Each strand is made from a sequence of nucleotides. The double-stranded nature of DNA allows for replication. Because DNA can be copied, it can be passed on. It is the hereditary material of all life, our genetic code. But what exactly does it code for? Particular segments of DNA, called genes, contain coding regions with the information needed to synthesize a particular protein. Each gene in a genome codes for a different protein. Different types of cells express different genes to build different proteins and perform different functions. Proteins include receptors, enzymes, transporters, sensory molecules, and so much more. When a particular gene is being used to direct protein synthesis, it is called gene expression. Information flows from DNA to RNA to an amino acid sequence to protein. Let's take a look at the process of transcription, the first step of protein synthesis. A particular segment of DNA, a gene, is loosened and opened, exposing a specific sequence of DNA bases. The enzyme RNA polymerase is recruited to the strand. Using the sequence of DNA as a template, the polymerase enzyme synthesizes a single strand of RNA by catalyzing the dehydration synthesis reaction between RNA nucleotides. If the DNA template reads G, C, T, A, the corresponding RNA bases will be C, G, A, U. Don't forget that RNA does not have thymine. Instead, it has a similar pyrimidine called uracil, which can form base pairs with adenine. Just like all nucleic acids, RNA is synthesized in the 5' to 3' direction, while the antiparallel template strand is being read from 3' to 5'. Only one of the DNA strands serves as a template here. Not only is it the template for the DNA code on the other strand, but it is the template for the RNA version of this code. This complementary template strand is referred to as the non-coding strand, the minus strand, or the antisense strand. The RNA synthesized from the DNA template is referred to as mRNA, M standing for messenger. The mRNA is a transcript of the message from DNA which will be read by the ribosome for protein synthesis. In eukaryotes, we have one more step before this message is ready to be used. The mRNA must go through processing, a series of enzyme-catalyzed modifications. Within eukaryotic genes are coding sequences called exons and non-coding sequences called introns. Remember that the introns are found in between the exons. The introns interrupt the exons. The non-coding introns are excised. Excision means removal. And the coding exons are spliced together. Splicing means to join. You might be wondering, what is the purpose of interrupting introns? Isn't it costly to a cell to waste energy with mRNA processing? One benefit of the interrupting introns is the potential for alternative splicing. The separated exons can be spliced together in various ways, resulting in multiple possible protein products from a single gene. This increases the diversity of proteins in an organism. Further modifications in eukaryotes include the addition of a 5' GTP cap and a 3' poly A tail. These chemical modifications have two functions. First, they help to protect the mRNA from cellular enzymes that break down nucleic acids. Second, they help the mRNA bind to the ribosome for the second step of protein synthesis called translation.